Right now, Toyota is Kodak, is Nokia. Collapse is imminent. When I say imminent, it will happen before the end of this decade. They are about to be disrupted in a way that we have not seen in the history of the automotive industry. The new players are moving in to take Toyota's territory. This is going to happen fast. It will be brutal. and It will be unlike anything we have ever seen in the history of the planet. Tesla makes more profit per car than any of their competitors. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic began in March of 2020, the world started to witness a very strange phenomenon, something that had never been seen before. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel, I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you, welcome to all the new subscribers, welcome back everyone else, really great to see so many more people interested in electric cars, in battery technology, in what the world's going to look like in 10 years time from now and it's going to be very different to what it is today. Obviously, one of the key reasons because of this, this transition, this huge change is Tesla and the insane profit margins they're making right now. Prices of cars are way higher now than what they were two years ago, for example. They've gone up more in the last two years than they did in the last five years combined. One of the key reasons for this is the fundamental law of economics, supply and demand. Not only that, manufacturers more dependent on internal combustion engines for their vehicle sales, strangely, actually have lower margins right now. That's something that nobody is seemingly aware of. Incredibly, vehicle manufacturers offering electric cars and plug-in hybrids are currently making higher margins. There are exceptions that apply to every rule, and this exception doesn't apply to General Motors, who have been able to buck this trend. Consulting firm Ernst & Young calculated how much margin manufacturers make on every vehicle sold. Comparing sales figures with financial results, they came to an interesting conclusion. Not surprisingly, it turned out that Tesla is the most profitable manufacturer worldwide. One of the reasons for this, of course, is the way that they've been able to make their factories more efficient. Also, every single car they sell is electric. Tesla's current gross margins are at around 20% per car. Now, those margins have been calculated from EBIT data or EBIT data. That means earnings before taxes and fees, not from net profit figures, which already take taxes and fees into account. Among Tesla's multiple efficiency measures, we should point out that Tesla has only four models for sale, the Model Y, the Model 3, the Model S, and the Model X, and it doesn't offer any discounts, and it doesn't have any dealerships in a traditional sense. In addition, it does not invest any money in marketing or advertising. Its whole business model is much simpler than the market it's currently disrupting. Now, for comparison's sake, macrotrends.net says that currently Toyota makes a 9.1% profit margin or EBIT profit margin, meaning Tesla makes more than twice as much money per car Potentially even more than that, seeing as their cars have a higher average sales price than Toyota. In fact, in spite of the fact that Toyota sold more than three times as many cars as Tesla over the first quarter of this year, Tesla still made more profit than Toyota. In total, that's not per car, that's in total. What about the three German manufacturers, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, and BMW? Well, you'd think, right, that these guys would be making a lot of money because, I mean, they're luxury cars, right? They sell at a margin. Well, all of them do have margins above 10%, but there are many costs associated with the many models they have. They have way more models than Tesla. Therefore, their efficiency is far lower. I've been talking about this for a long, long time now. It's a huge mistake for companies like General Motors to say they're going to have 35 EVs within a few years' time. That's so many models. Efficiency is so much lower. The same thing, the same mistake, I believe, is being repeated by legacy auto company Volkswagen, saying they're going to have more than 80 different electrified models by the end of this decade. 
Imagine the number of production lines, the number of parts you need for that many models. Yes, I understand platforms can be shared. However, there's still a lot more complexity with this many models compared to simplifying things in the way that Tesla does. Now, the other problem that German automakers have is enormous dependence on the Chinese auto market, which is moving to EVs, considering Mercedes, BMW, and Audi really not ready for the market to move to EVs yet. They're only producing a small number. This is a huge problem for those companies. Now, also considering the fact that most of the cars they sell now are internal combustion engines, they need to spend a huge amount on factories for their new vehicles, or at least production lines and robotics for their new vehicles. In other words, on R&D in engineering in order to comply with emissions regulations on those current vehicles they sell, let alone the investments they need to make in order to electrify their entire fleets over the next five years. What about having factories stopped, having to stop production lines in order for new production lines to be fitted out? That removes huge amounts of production and therefore results in significant losses, significantly lower margins per car. All in all, they actually have a long way to catch up with Tesla and it's a lot further than people actually realize for all the reasons that I've just mentioned. Those are things that people often don't think about when comparing Tesla with other traditional automakers. Breaking this vicious cycle, says talknews.com, is a responsibility that actually falls on suppliers as well. So that the factories are once again aligned with demand, there are cars available again, on the other hand, and prices can be reasonably adjusted. In order to make up for these losses that automakers will accrue over the next few years, manufacturers want to make more money from software. And this is a situation where customers probably are going to be forced by companies such as Mercedes, General Motors, Ford, etc., to pay money for subscriptions and add-on services. And why do I say that? Well, all these companies are saying that's what they're going to do. GM in particular has said that their margins are going to massively increase because they're going to start slugging customers for all these extra services. They've claimed that they're going to make billions of dollars doing this, and they're not the only ones. Much of Legacy Auto says the same exact thing. But there's one company already doing this, but doing it for free. Which brand is doing it? Well, Tesla. Tesla still has a big competitive advantage in these areas. You can pay Tesla right now a few thousand dollars to unlock performance that that car already has. Tesla therefore makes money from you for doing absolutely nothing. Full self-driving, same thing. Tesla makes money, doesn't even hand over full self-driving. The other advantage that Tesla has is they make so many more electric cars than their competition. They don't need to catch up to anyone. They don't need to transform their factories because they're already making what customers want. Throughout this decade, we will see a war, an emotional war, spiritual war, and a commercial war. Even Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, said it himself. He said a price war is coming. Once production and supply chain problems are eliminated, and once the Chinese EVs start hitting the US and Europe, and Australia and other countries around the world, margins will lower for legacy auto. They won't be increasing as the legacy auto companies claim that they will be. Legacy auto will be forced to engage in actual real competition with themselves and with these new incumbent companies, including Tesla, including Neo, including Xpeng, and more importantly than those two Chinese car companies I just mentioned is BYD who are the third largest battery company on the face of the earth. Now, for those of you who are not in a hurry to buy a new car right now, and you can wait, my advice is to hold off. Electric cars are coming at lower prices than what they're at now. Once these new incumbents move into the market and start manufacturing millions of EVs per year, legacy automakers will be forced to compete with them. Prices will come down. Battery prices will come down as energy efficiency in continues to improve, meaning battery packs can be smaller to get similar ranges. All of this leads to the reality. The Legacy Auto have had their day in the sun. Kodak, they had their day in the sun. Nokia, they had their day in the sun. 
That day in the sun is about to end. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you agree, disagree? Am I crazy? Am I right? Am I wrong? And as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.